Alright folks, welcome back to the Gearhead Fellowship channel where we're finishing up our 204-hour build and today we're talking torque converters. So if torque converters are your thing, you have any questions about it or you just want to come along for the ride, hey, click subscribe, click the like button, put in some comments at the bottom and let's, head, let's get started. Um, this is a huge component of the transmission. Remember we're doing that max effort 204-hour build with the uh, billet uh, internals and high pressure on the pump and everything and just had a few basics we wanted to cover back with the torque converter side of things some of the changes we're making as well as some final pump upgrades that I didn't talk about earlier because we've just done them so um, alright first things first we got two torque converters sitting here this is the torque converter that came with the transmission stop when I did it for Monster Transmission this is a 10, 10 inch stall converter that they had made it's a non lockup style converter um, for those that are not familiar there's a lockup clutch typically on this side of the converter. You can see that this has a more of a traditional style base to it, uh, and that's a non lockup style compared to this one. You see how it's got this long uh, uh, cylinder base to it. This is a full billet lockup converter from Precision Industry. So, this is the 10 inch converter that was locking up, it's supposed to be 2600 to 3000. It was flashing to 3200 RPM. And it was just is way more converter than I wanted for the street and this is a big big concern actually as far as this goes because I had a 400, turbo 400 transmission in the car and it was really tight it would chirp the tires when it when it shifted and when I put the 204 in with the higher stall converter it definitely worked better with the cam but it was still too much converter for the car and the shifts at part throttle were very soft so I wanted to get a converter that was better matched for the car and uh, so I, I went online and talked to a lot of the guys in the uh, Turbo Buick forums and finding out what was the best converter that had a lockup style converter to it because I wanted to go to lockup. For those who are not familiar, lockup is basically a, a clutch system that's in the bottom part of the converter that the transmission can send hydraulic fluid into the converter and lock that converter so you don't have any slipping. Uh, when you're at cruising speed and that type of thing. So I was able to get uh, uh, this converter from Precision Industries and the guys at the, uh, the Turbo Buick Forum said that's so what they said that's the best one to have a converter that could deal with a wide open lockup. That means wide open throttle, full throttle and lock the converter. The only converters that seem to last in that regard are Precision Industry converters. And this is a full billet. This is their Vigilante 10.5 it's got a triple disc billet clutch inside here so it's good for that thousand horsepower wide open throttle lockup and with this setup we should be able to lock this converter in second gear and manually shift it to third and manually shift it to fourth um, might be a really big explosion but that's supposed to be what we should be able to do so some of the other things that precision industries does to make this happen are some specific pump modifications and since we're almost finished with putting everything inside the transmission this is my last chance to really show you what what's happened here with the pump so let me show you some of the changes with the pump uh, one and I didn't talk about this earlier but if you look right down this hole right here right in here you'll see this you can actually see a spring right down in there it's kind of hard to see with the light but this is your pressure relief spring and in higher pressure systems uh, basically you got a nail that goes right here through the pump body and it holds that spring in place and prevents that spring from pushing out pushes tension up on a ball that's down in here that when there's enough pressure to relief well guys were saying that what will happen is over time it'll fatigue the coils on that spring it'll break the bottom coil in that spring drop tension on the spring and cause the valve to buzz and uh, so one of the guys had a real simple fix to that he said take a small stainless steel washer and get it up in there in between the uh, the retaining pin, the nail, and the the, uh, the spring. So we did that, so that's in there now. Definitely not something you could do once it was in the car. And the other thing we did was the Precision Industries pump modification for wide open throttle lockup, and that's where this tube comes into play. This tube was added. This is part of the converter kit from PI, and basically it's going into a hole that's now completely covered up on the back of the pump but this is actually your your torque converter exhaust so it would normally just flow fluid out into the into the transmission here it's redirecting fluid back in to your pump intake 
So here's where your filter goes and it's sucking your fluid up through in, into the pump. And it's basically going to vent the torque converter uh, exhaust fluid straight back into the pump to actually suck it out of the uh, torque converter side to help with that wide open throttle lockup. So I wanted to show you those things. That's what's going on with that. And um, as far as the converters go, this uh, converter is set up more for the cam that we have. It should come in right around 2400 RPM, uh, a little bit less than the other one. Plus, it's full billet internal is going to handle all the tor horsepower and torque. Uh, the other converter was just really loose. And uh, with the Pontiac, it was pegging the torque out. Max torque, typically you want your converter to stall right around max torque, maybe a few hundred RPM below max torque. And max torque on the Pontiac, how it's set up, at least right now, is 2,500 RPM. 550 foot-pounds at 2,500 RPM. Well, and actually, this converter was coming in about five to 700 RPM after peak torque. So torque was actually dropping down. So I wanted to get something that was coming in right at peak torque uh, and something that would be able to hold up and, and last much longer. So we've got... So that. I hope you appreciated the video today on torque converters. Um, some of the minor changes that we're doing and some of the things to hopefully tweak the, 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 the piece of this. Some of the other stuff we're going to do, we've already test fit the input shaft into the new torque converter. We've already test fit the pump down into the new torque converter to make sure that the splines for the stator support and all that stuff match up. There's no problems there. I need to dry fit the converter to the flywheel because I want to make sure that the button in the back of the converter has enough clearance to go into the camshaft or the crankshaft. I might need to sand this down a little bit to get it to fit um, to make sure because sometimes that paint will just take up the little bit of clearance that it has. I want to make sure that this fits in all regards before we fill it with fluid and get it hanging on the front of that transmission because that is no time to find out that something's not quite right. So. Finishing this up, we'll finish putting everything inside the transmission case, and hopefully we'll be putting the transmission in the car pretty soon. Thanks a lot for joining us. Once again, if you like this type of thing, you want to follow the build process, check out the other videos we've got as we've been building the, pro the, the transmission. And also, uh, like and subscribe to see what we have coming up as we move forward with getting the car back on the road. Take it easy.